This is Land of Havila, Exodus 40. The craftsmen built all the components, but they haven't pitched the tent yet. Verse 1. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month you shall raise up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. Comment. Let's get our bearings here. Location-wise, Israel still camped at Mount Sinai. And time-wise, in, in verse 1, Yahweh is referring to the Hebrew calendar that he set up in Exodus 12:2. When he said the month they departed Egypt would be the first month of the year to them. They started the exodus on the 14th of that first month, Exodus 12:51, and they arrived at Sinai in the third month, Exodus 19:1. So now, according to verse 1 we just read, the first month of the year is about to roll around again. So they left Egypt just under a year ago, and they've been at Sinai for about nine months. We might ask how long it took to manufacture all the articles. Since they've been at Mount Sinai, Moses spent over 120 days on the mountain with Yahweh in at least four different trips up the mountain and back. Plus, Yahweh's been speaking to Moses out of the cloud at the door of the tent of meeting as well, Exodus 33, 9. So when we scratch off that amount of time, we can, we can say they built the articles of the tabernacle in five months or less. Yahweh said in verse 1, Assemble the tabernacle on the first day of the first month, New Year's Day in other words, just ahead of the second Passover, which will be on the 14th of the first month, perpetually. Coming up, Yahweh's instructions for assembly, not necessarily in this order, verse 3. You shall put the Ark of the Testimony in it, and you shall screen the Ark with the veil. You shall bring in the table and set in order the things that are on it. Comment, that's the bread table with the twelve loaves of bread and the solid gold dishes, spoons, ladles, and bowls for pouring drink. Still in verse 4, you shall bring in the lampstand and light its lamps. Comment, this can't be the order of assembly. They wouldn't light the lamps without setting up the tent first and protecting the lamps from the wind. Also, we know that Yahweh will command whenever they move from camp to camp for the tent to be carried first, November, uh, Numbers 10, 17, so that they can set up the tent and have it ready by the time the furniture arrives. Numbers 10, 21. Verse 5. You shall set the golden altar for incense before the Ark of the Testimony and put the screen of the door to the tabernacle. Comment, the screen's the entry from the outside as opposed to the veil, which separates the tabernacle into two rooms, hiding the Ark in the far room. Now for the items in the court, verse 6. You shall set the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and shall put water therein. Comment now for the fence, verse 8. You shall set up the court around it and hang up the screen of the gate of the court. Comment, the linen fencing isn't colored, so the colored gate will really stand out. Jesus is the gate. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. And he said, I am the door. Now for sanctifying all the objects inside the court with anointing oil, verse 9. You shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it and shall make it holy and all its furniture and it will be holy. You shall anoint the altar of burnt offering with all its vessels and sanctify the altar and the altar will be most holy. You shall anoint the basin and its base and sanctify it. Comment. We are God's temple. Quote, Don't you know that you're a temple of God and that God's spirit lives in you? 1 Corinthians 3.16. We're holy, quote, God's temple is holy, which you are, 1 Corinthians 3.17. We've been filled with the Holy Spirit, which made us a temple of God, which makes us holy. As the instruments of the tabernacle were suitable for God's use after being anointed, we're suitable for God's use. Coming up, the sanctification of the priests, which Yahweh described 11 chapters ago, the text here only gives an abbreviated account, verse 12. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tent of meeting and shall wash them with water. You shall put on Aaron the holy garments and you shall anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister to me in the priest's office. You shall bring his sons and put coats on them. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father that they may minister to me in the priest's office. Their anointing shall be to them for an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Comment, Aaron's descendants will inherit the priesthood throughout the generations. That completes Yahweh's command for 
the assembly and the consecration, now the doing of it. The big day has arrived. We'll notice the assembly will be in a different order coming up, but still it's not in the logical sequence that they'll actually do it. Verse 16, Moses did so according to all that Yahweh commanded him, so he did. In the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was raised up. Moses raised up the tabernacle and laid its sockets and set up its boards and put in its bars and raised up its pillars. He spread the covering over the tent and put the roof of the tabernacle above on it as Yahweh commanded Moses. He took and put the testimony into the ark and set the poles on the ark and put the mercy seat above the ark. He brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the screen and screened the ark of the testimony as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put the table in the tent of meeting on the side of the tabernacle northward outside the veil. He set the bread in order on it before Yahweh as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the side of the tabernacle southward. Comment. As the priest enters, the table will be on the right, which is north, and on, and on his left will be the lampstand, which is the south. Verse 25. He lit the lamps before Yahweh, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put the golden altar in the tent of meeting before the veil, and he burned incense of sweet spices on it, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put up the screen door of the tabernacle. Comment now for the items in the court. Verse 29. He set the altar of burnt offering at the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting and offered on it the burnt offering and the meal offering as Yahweh commanded Moses. Comment. The burnt offering and meal offering were according to Yahweh's commandments 11 chapters ago for the sanctification of the priests and the holy objects. Verse 30. He set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water therein with which to wash. Moses, Aaron, and his sons washed their hands and their feet there. When they went into the tent of meeting and when they came near to the altar, they washed, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He raised up the court around the tabernacle and the altar and set up the screen of the gate of the court. So Moses finished the work. Comment, the descriptions were organized by item and not by order of setup. When Yahweh first mentioned the making of the tabernacle, he said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell with them, Exodus 25, 8. Now that it's set up and sanctified by blood and oil and the priests are sanctified, will Yahweh move in? Verse 34. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and Yahweh's glory filled the tabernacle. Moses wasn't able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud stayed on it, and Yahweh's glory filled the tabernacle. Comment, Yahweh's glory filled the tabernacle. They used a makeshift tent of meeting until now. Whenever Moses entered that, the cloud descended to the door, Exodus 33, 9. Moses would speak to Yahweh in the cloud at the tent door and come away with his face shining, Exodus 34, 35. But there was never anything said about a glory so strong there that it kept Moses out. So this is a spectacular response from Yahweh. He's dwelling with them as he said he would. That glory will subside or they won't be able to enter the tabernacle, but the glory of the pillar of cloud and fire will be there every day for the next 39 years. Speaking of that pillar, verse 36, when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward throughout all their journeys. But if the cloud wasn't taken up, they didn't travel until the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of Yahweh was on the tabernacle by day, and there was fire in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel, throughout all their journeys. Comment, the end. That was the last verse of Exodus. The glory of God comes in limitless forms, and it was a pleasure to witness the glory of the written word as he gave it to us here in Exodus. Genesis through 2 Kings is one continuous history. The history continues from here in the book of Leviticus, which is almost completely law given at Sinai in addition to the laws that were recorded here. Then Numbers picks up after that, which takes Israel 39 years through the desert from Mount Sinai to the edge of the Promised Land. Check other available titles at landofhavilah.net.